one hell of a week of moving. Luckily, we had plenty of time. Let's get a little light on the subject here. Might need to do something with the acoustics in this room, too. The acoustics! A little bouncy in here. Anyway. We had plenty of time because we have our rent paid for like the next two months. You pay rent like every three months here. We'll get the money back. But we had plenty of time to move. So we, every day we loaded up like this cart. As you guys saw in the last video and pushed like a cart down the street. And we kind of moved everything room by room. We still have a little organizing of the few details to do. But we are basically done. The man cave is basically done. The gym is back in action. But check this out. I woke up this morning I woke up this morning to this. There was birds singing outside my window instead of horns beeping. Listen, listen. Shh. Nobody's killing chickens on the sidewalk or boiling rice. There's no stench coming up from the frickin' stores and restaurants and people pushing their way through the gate and horns honking and insanity. There's a canal there and the tees off to another canal over there. And then there's the highway past that, but the highway has like the sound barriers on it. You can still hear it a little bit in a horn once in a while, but for the most part, oh my God, it was so nice to wake up here this morning and to sleep here last night with no horns beeping and nobody pushing through, shoving. Duh! Oh. So let's look out the other window because now here's the other window. So I don't even, we can just take the dogs right out there to go potty. It is so freaking wonderful. No pushing and shoving to get in the elevator in the gate. Right, honey? Mm. We just got through moving like our last cart. We have like a few plants and like a shelf to move. And my dogs are dying to go outside, so they're jumping all over my legs. But here's what I want to tell you guys. Let me set you down right here so we can have a little chat chat. I did sneak out and fly. How's that? I did sneak out and fly once or twice. And while I was flying, just relaxing, nothing special, just down here at the end of the road in my usual little relaxing fly spot. Um, and while I was doing that, so it's not like some special flight or whatever, some special spot or anything crazy. But what I want you to look at, I'm gonna, it's DJI, DV, oh, that reminds me too. See, I'm freaking so scatterbrained. I got my Lumineer gear in, boom. I'm not super concerned about range. I mean, I rarely fly more than like 500 meters away, even the building dives and stuff. But inside of the range that I do fly, I want the best link possible to keep the lowest latency, best quality, whatever. So anyway, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna post this flight from the DJI DVR, DVR. And I want you guys to check it out. I want you to pay attention to the flight. And then we're going to talk about this afterwards because I have something that dawned on me while I was flying. Okay? Here's the flight.
was done with a three inch. An old Acrobrat, oh my God, the OG original three inch. And what blows my mind about that, right, is like, I can't eat, I, you know, with the sliders and the Betaflight 4.2 and stuff, I fiddle around with this just for a little bit, set the filters, set the sliders, motors are ice cold and it flies so freaking good. Like, I can't even hardly get it to prop wash. You know what I'm saying? Like, just a not too distant past long ago, you couldn't get a three inch to fly. It would take you, even when you tuned it to the very edge, you would still get the, the three inch jitters. You know, but this thing is just freaking rock solid. It dawned on me how good things have become. Not only that, three inches tend to be really robotic and with the um the new rates you can set up like the actual rates and stuff and change the um the i turn the uh, the cutoffs and whatever and just make this thing fly so freaking smooth i'm a big advocate you guys have heard me said it before uh three inches are a pilot squad you go out there and you practice with a three inch on the sticks to fly super smooth on a three inch, and if you can do it on a three inch, your five inch is gonna be butter. But now, like, I mean, they're just, they're so freaking good. It just, uh, I just had, it just dawned on me, like, oh my God, these are, you know what I'm saying. Also, the um, having the um, DJI, like you could get the three inches with an air unit in it, right? And really take full advantage of the recording. But just the DVR on this is freaking fantastic with the 50 megabytes per second. I think it loads in like 40 megabytes per second after that, which, you know, is pretty good, pretty crystal clear. Because the thing was, we used to fly these with the splits to get the HD footage. And the dynamic range on those splits always sucked. You would always have the black areas, like when you went to dive into some trees or something, it would be all blacked out and you couldn't see anything. 
but with the DV, even just with the DVR, it's like crystal clear. So I thought I would share that with you guys. Do you have similar findings? How many of you guys fly a three inch? You know, if you don't, you should set up one three inch. The, Cause the other thing is, is like, you just got these little tiny batteries, right? Little 4S, you can throw like freaking 20 of these in your backpack. They don't take but a minute to charge up. So you can just bring a little field charger with you even and just keep charging them because they don't discharge that much and just have a freaking ball. Everything fits inside the backpack, nice and small. No worries. Boom. All right, and then the one other thing I got for you guys is I did load this AirBot F7. I did a whole build video on this, but I'm not going to show it because I'm taking this off of here. It flies great. This is the AirBot HD7, I think they call it. But I tried every freaking MSRP port and every configuration I could think of, and I cannot get any OSD not even the battery voltage and i gotta have at least the battery voltage when i'm flying so i don't kill my batteries yes i know i could run it through the crossfire telemetry and have my radio scream out at me and whatever but i don't want to do that i just want it on my osd i don't want to go through all that i want all my quads consistently the same i don't want to have one that yells out in the radio so anyway that being said i'm going to take this off of there and we are going to put these um this iflight twin g I fight success twin G mini F7 stack on there. Here it is right here. The ESC, the FC, DJI ready. Comes with a plethora of freaking plugs to hook up whatever we need to, to hook up the DJI, the ESC, blah, 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 whatever you're going to run with it. I think that's the DJI cord right there. Now it is um, 2.5 instead of M3, but they give you the little mounting screws here. That'll work just fine in there. Maybe I'll find some little rubber sleeve to go inside them or something, but they will fit in an M3 base plate as they are. They'll just be a little wiggly, but it doesn't matter because you have the, plast uh, the um, rubber mounts that will just throw another O-ring underneath there or whatever, and they're not gonna, it's not gonna move around enough to affect anything. And uh, the Twin G, you're probably not going to feel a difference in the sticks or anything like that. It's not going to like suddenly be magical flying. But what happens with a Twin Gyro is you get such so much more information. The gyro traces will end up being a lot cleaner. So you won't have the micro vibrations, the ones that you don't know about, that make your motors hot and stuff like that. So you'll be able to bring a tune I will be able to bring, not you, I don't know why I'm speaking in the you person, I always usually keep it on me. I won't have the micro vibrations and I will be able to bring my tune to more of a sharper edge easier, if that makes any sense. Because it'll just have a clean, cleaner trace. Like I said, you're not going to really feel it in the sticks or whatever. But anyway, so I'm going to get this peeled off of here, get this installed, and... We're almost done with the move. The man cave is looking sharp. Got all my crap in here. I was able to set my desk at a right angle this time instead of against the wall. So I got all my stuff like right freaking here. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Got my favorite hat, my bowlers, my derby with my HQ pink prop. And we are rocking and rolling. Peace. So let's do a surprise interview with the wife. Okay, let me get my hat back on. So, honey, say hello to your fans. Hello. How do you like your new apartment? Good. Good? How was the moving? Okay. Okay, it wasn't bad because we got to do it room by room, huh? Slow process, we didn't have to kill ourselves. Nobody loves moving. Nobody likes moving, but it wasn't too painful. Uh -uh. It's just a process for a happy ending. Mm, for a happy ending? Oh, I get a happy ending. No. <laughs> <laughs> so how was your day? Okay. Do you like your new apartment? Yes. Yes? Do you like me? Yes. Aww. Say bye, honey. Bye. Say bye, honey. Bye, honey. <laughs> Give some shots of my dogs. Hi, dogs. 
Do you like your new apartment? How was moving? Is everything okay now? Yeah? Sit. Sit. High five. Good girl. Coco, sit. Uh -uh -uh. Are you guys ready to go out and play? You want to go out and play? Are you ready? I'm ready too. Say bye to everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.